Hi, I'm Matt Smith, owner and CEO of Revolver Electronic Cigarettes. And I'm Russ, I'm the lead lab technician over here at Revolver. And we're making this video to answer a few questions about a news story that aired on November 7th from our local television station, WTOL Channel 11. The report was done by Brandon Jones, and basically what we want to do is just answer a few questions that we've seen popping up online and like on our Facebook and social media pages, and even in our stores from customers who watched the report and may have been misinformed. So we really just want to go through it and piece by piece let you know, you know what was accurate, what was inaccurate. And the first thing I do want to say in response to uh, you know, what a lot of people have been saying is that we absolutely do not believe that the news station was uh, associated with big tobacco companies at all. In fact, actually, what we really think happened is that uh, a news station, you know, Brandon Jones has a job like everybody else, and so he has deadlines to meet. And so we think he just kind of pieced together a story really quick to get a reaction. And it worked. And what we want to do now is, uh, since we are feeling the backlash from that, is to just kind of set things right, especially with all the unhappy vapors out there who know better. So take a look at a clip here from the news report, and then we'll go talk about it. Kid, who, theoretically, who's seven or eight can walk in and buy an e-cigarette today. So that's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. The first thing we want to talk about is who can buy electronic cigarettes. Now, we don't sell to minors, so that's anybody under 18, and the FDA will regulate electronic cigarettes as a tobacco product which means it will become law. Now, some places, granted, might, I don't know, sell to somebody 17 or 16 years old, but Attorney General Mike DeWine says that theoretically, a seven or eight year old could buy an electronic cigarette. Now, I wanna know who's gonna sell a seven or eight year old an electronic cigarette. I don't think that somebody who is a legit business owner would do that. So using that seems to me as an invalid point or scare tactic. This just doesn't happen. We don't even allow anybody under 18 into our shop unless they're accompanied by an adult and we ID everybody who comes in. However, online, all you need is a credit card to purchase them. So one thing we noticed in the report is that they showed Blue Sig's website and mentioned that a minor would only need a credit card to make a purchase. And what I find funny about this is that Blue Sigs actually uses a stringent age verification process that occurs during checkout and happens behind the scenes in which the purchaser would validate their identity through the Experian Credit Bureau. So what I would like to know then is why would you show Blue Sigs website without doing the research? And why would you make the statement that you only need a credit card to make the purchase if you really don't know. Now on our website, revolversig.com, we are currently implementing a similar process to do age verification in the same way. This way, we feel confident that minors won't be able to purchase our products either. And this is going to be an industry standard very soon. Let's look at the next point in the video. Some health professionals aren't convinced. We took a look inside the battery-powered device and found it's made up of water, alcohol, nicotine, of course, and a host of chemicals, including one that you may not have known was in it, diethylene glycol, a chemical used in antifreeze. But the health risks still remain a big question. In fact, the last known study by the Food and Drug Administration on e-cigarettes was in 2009. The agency found that there could be harmful chemicals in them. Plus, the FDA believes e-cigarettes could be addictive. Dr. Matt Roth with ProMedica agrees. So the first thing I want to talk about is the last comment they made that electronic cigarettes may be addictive. Of course they're addictive. They contain nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive substance. So is caffeine, which is in coffee. And where's the new story about that? Okay? Now, we're offering an alternative to smoking. We're not saying that you can use it to quit. We're not pushing this to people who have never smoked before. This is what electronic cigarettes are all about. Now they also mentioned that they took a look inside of the electronic cigarette to see what's in it. The first thing I ask is who took the look inside? Did they do it? And how did they do it? In 2009, the FDA did a study 
And in this study, they tested 18 electronic cigarette cartridges, one of which uh, did contain diethylene glycol. Um, although one, it was about 1%, it's very diluted at that point. Um, it really wouldn't be adverse to your health at that point, um, especially since the flash point of diethylene glycol is 290 degrees. So that means that if you were to just uh, put diethylene glycol into your e-cig in a pure form, it would not even vaporize. The e-cig does not get hot enough to where diethylene glycol could be vaporized. So if it was vaporized, it was so heavily diluted that it could, it could actually be turned into vapor at that point, but it's, so, it's such a small amount that it wouldn't actually affect your health. Um, but since then, uh, the e-cig industry has taken relentless efforts into making sure that um, the, the recipes and, and the liquids that are, that are made are completely free of any sort of uh, harmful chemicals, such as diethylene glycol. Um, there's been more research done, and, and people are uh, just really making sure that uh, the liquids that are being made now are completely safe to vape. They're using just mainly propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, artificial and natural flavoring. They're, they're free of anything that's going to harm your health or, or be a health risk to, uh, to anyone that's using electronic cigarettes. And we got to remember that this report was done back in 2009. And so it, there's been many years since then, and we've progressed quite a bit. In fact, actually, Russ makes the liquid for us here at Revolver. Russ, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the process that we use? The way we manufacture e-liquid at Revolver, uh, we actually have a professional secured lab. Um, the only two people that go inside of it at all times are myself and my lab partner. Um, we always make sure that we always take precautionary measures to make sure that no foreign debris ever gets around the e-liquid or especially in the bottles. So you can rest assured that when you buy from Revolver, you have a very high quality product. Um, we only use the highest quality ingredients, highest quality propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, and flavorings. And 40 attorneys generals, including Mike DeWine, want the FDA to regulate e-cigarettes. DeWine says e-cigarettes are viewed like a tobacco product to the FDA, even though they contain no tobacco. And because of this, there's no oversight from the FDA, DeWine says, to ensure they're safe. The FDA uh, is pretty slow in even responding. Uh, I think we need to light a fire under them. Uh, I know that members of Congress are talking about holding hearings on this issue. So the last thing I want to touch on in the video really quick is the regulation. And I definitely want to say that Revolver supports electronic cigarette regulation. We absolutely want control and rules, and we want to keep these out of the hands of minors. And it'd be great if we treated them like tobacco products. A lot of people might look at it negatively and say that you're taking away this, you're taking away that. But in reality, you know, we've made vaping a hobby. It's become a hobbyist culture, which is great. And we support that. You know, all of us that Revolve, we all vape. We love it. But you have to realize that vaping originally came out so that people would have an alternative to smoking. And that's what our main focus is with it, and that's how we have to treat it. So if it means regulating it to keep it out of the hands of kids or to uh, you know, control media ads like commercials and signage, so be it. You know, we'll pay a little bit more. We'll pay you know, taxes on it just like they do cigarettes. That's great. We just want to keep it around and keep the industry growing strong. The FDA is now considering regulating e-cigarettes, but the agency did not give a timeline as to when that might happen. Keep in mind, those in favor of e-cigarettes say the device has stopped them from smoking regular cigarettes. They say they've experienced less coughing, easier breathing, and of course there are chemicals that are not included in the e-cigarettes that are included in regular cigarettes. Regular cigarettes. So I just want to wrap this up really quick. We didn't want to make it too long. We just want to touch on the points made in the news report. And the points being that, one, uh, we don't market or sell to minors. And honestly, I don't think anybody does. Uh, two, that uh, the age verification for online sales is going into place on many uh, different retailers who sell online. So that's going to be an issue of the past very quickly here. Uh, and three, 
that uh, the ingredients do not include uh, diethylene glycol, but rather propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, nicotine, and artificial natural flavorings. So we really just wanted to kind of uh, show you that if you watched the news report and got worried that there's really nothing to worry about and give you the correct information. We do want to say thank you for watching this. I'm Matt. This is Russ. We're from Revolver Electronic Cigarettes. We thank you for your support and hope to continue to see you vaping as time goes on. Vape on.